Today on Crossing Paths. There's times, Don, I wanted to give up. But when I wanted to give up, I kept saying, I'm a child of God. Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Past Television Ministry. My name is <clears throat> Don Reed Sr., and I'm the founder of this ministry, Crossing Past TV, and we thank you for supporting us, and maybe we got some new viewers, but <clears throat> let me tell you something. Crossing Past is meeting a lot of people, and today, this message, I'm going to call it life, a lot of people say, or death. I say life or your last breath. We have a man today that's been on our program years ago, and he went through this situation, so I want you to listen to this testimony because you better be ready. And this man, he was ready, but he's going to tell you a true story. Our guest today, Gary Palm. Gary, welcome to Crossing Pass. Thank you, Don. I'd like to be back on your show again. Oh, God and bless you. Let you know what God's really done in my life. I've been with the Lord now for 25 years. In August, I'll be walking with the Lord. Wow. And it's been a blessing. He has helped me through a lot of things that I thought I never could go through. Like when I had open heart surgery. He, uh, uh, I, it was in October 2015, on a Friday, I had open heart surgery. When I come out of surgery, uh, I woke up. And uh, when I woke up, my body was like, it was in like a, they put oil over my body. And, uh, I asked the nurse if I could get somebody to clean me up because I could not do things myself at the time. And she said, yes, they would have somebody come in. So they shaved me and cleaned me up, washed me up good and everything. And I sat there a little bit and I said, could I go for a walk? And they had a chair, a special chair for me to walk behind me. And so they, uh, I proceed to walk and do this and that, but one time after I come back from a walk, I sat down and looked down, and my arms and hands were again with like oil put on, and I looked down inside of my gown, and on top of my stitches was like little beads of oil. And so, in the meantime, they took me back up to a room up on the floor in Pittsburgh Hospital, and where I got good treatment. That's a Presbyterian, and. Uh, the passive, I, I believe. Yeah, passive, I'm sorry, because my wife corrects me on that. And uh, I, was, I walked the floors and everything, and that was Friday evening, Saturday. Sunday, my wife came down to visit with me, and uh, when they went home Sunday evening, I, I wasn't feeling too good then a little bit, and I was watching the planes going in and out of Pittsburgh Airport. And uh, so it was around 10 o'clock. Was going to watch the news, and I said, no. I shut the TV off and laid in bed. Dozed off for a little bit, and I woke up, and I was really feeling a little bit funny. I thought, well, maybe I should call the nurse. But I didn't. I went back to sleep. That's when, 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard the doctors yelling at me, Mr. Palm, come on, breathe, breathe, breathe. We're losing you. Come on, Mr. Palm. And next thing I heard him say, uh, call his wife. We're taking him back down to intensive care. We're losing them. And in the meantime, uh, everything went black. I mean, I didn't hear no sounds, no nothing. And I sort of woke up like, I said, why am I in the grave? Why am I in the grave? Because I could see dirt, dirt, dirt. And I'm trying to look up over and I'm trying to get out. And I, all once I seen coming towards me, a black shadow, hmm. which is death. And when it approaches me close, everything went black again. Then the arms of the cross, just the, the, the arms. The one arm had the prayer shawl. The other arm had the blood of Jesus Christ. And they were just like a railroad train going back and forth. And when I looked at the prayer shawl, that means people were praying for me. It, and my church outside, your ministry was praying for me too. And then I uh, seen the blood and I, I cried out, Jesus. And all once a beam of light came down. Now, when that beam of light came down, I said, oh, I'm going to go to heaven. I was at peace. I had no worry because I knew I was walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. My life belonged to Christ. Yeah. But Christ himself appeared to me from the waist up. 
And when he appeared to me, it was in his glory. I mean, not even a snowflake could match his glory. And it was an honor to see my Lord Jesus face to face. He never spoke a word. He just looked at me. And then he left. Then uh, I woke up. And the next day, that was Monday morning when I woke up. An amazing part of it was, was I ready to go to heaven? Yes, I was. I was willing to leave my wife, my little dog, home. And when the doctors come in, he said, Mr. Palm, welcome back. And I, he said, uh, would you like to go home? And I, I said, well, yeah. He said, well, we're sending you home today. That was Monday morning. And uh, that was from Friday to Monday morning, I was in the hospital. And uh, the nurse come in, and she says, this is very unusual. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, your stitches are ready to come out. So she took the stitches out. They just crumbled right off. That's because of the anointing of the oil of my Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm. Touch those stitches, and they could be removed. And I don't have a real bad scar. I just got a little scar. And uh, they told my wife to come down and get me and take me home. And, you know, I've been walking with the Lord, uh, like I said, 25 years. And I'm ready to meet my Lord any time. But he's got a special need for me to do. And I went, have gone through a lot of trials. I had, in the meantime, after heart surgery, I had a, what to call emergency gastro bypass because 45 years ago I had a little, what to call a little tummy tuck and the mesh they used to go around my esophageal tube closed up and I was getting acid reflux, all kinds of stuff in my esophageal tube. And I had a beautiful doctor, and his doctor Myers, done the surgery for me. And I was facing death then because the way my skin was, because I couldn't eat, my, my skin was coming like paper, was tearing very easy. And, but God brought me through that. And then I had this virus that, that called COVID-19. I got that. And well, how, how did, I got How did they discover that? The only way they discovered that, Don, because I never knew I had it. I never was sick. I was never what you, running a fever or anything, because I was tested every day at work to see if I had a fever. And one day at church, we went, was, went out to eat, and I was going to the parking lot, and I, I couldn't, started feeling real funny. I couldn't walk right. And so uh, my wife took me down to the emergency room in Farrell. They ran some tests and said my enzyme was too high. So they sent me down to Newcastle Hospital. Down there, I was in there a couple of days, and on a Wednesday, they were going to do a uh, um, heart catheter. They go up through your arm and see if I had a, a valve or a blood vessel. So something was closing up to make my heart go up. Heart rate and enzyme goes up. Well, in the meantime, this doctor, uh, I, don't, I didn't get his name, was standing there and he kept saying, I don't like to look at this chart. I don't like to look at this chart. I thought he was talking about another patient. And then he said, Mr. Palm, he said, did you ever have a test? I said, yeah, they just done a test upstairs. I passed all their thermometers and this and that. He says, I'm not happy. So he called a, a person from the lab to come in. And then that's when they done the swab up to the nose and down to your throat. And uh, he said, well, no, in a half hour. Well, in the meantime, I'm laying there never thinking about the COVID-19. Pretty soon, they come over and close my curtain up. Everybody out of this room, I could hear them shout, everybody out, now, now, get out. And I thought, well, maybe the brain somebody through it passed away. And shortly after that, the nurse come over and she said, well, Mr. Palm, we got some bad news for you. I said, what's up? You had the COVID-19 bad. Wow. And I said, what? Stop right there. Bad. Huh? They said you have it bad? Yes. Huh. And you've already faced death one time before and you're thinking you know being older being sick it could potentially be something that could be life-threatening well they said i had it i always you know yeah. okay i have it 
But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a little break here. We're doing something to think about with uh, Ron Kosar, where he's gonna talk about life or death. Are you ready? Because all of us are gonna be at that point at some time yeah. where we are gonna have to face death. Yes, you are. And you want to make sure you're ready. So check this out, Ron Kosar, with something to think about. Hi, this is Pastor Ron, and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to today's Something to Think About. And today, during this session, we're going to talk about something that a whole lot of people really don't like to talk about that often. Jesus said this in the scriptures. It says that today I've placed before you life and death, and he wants you to choose life. So today we're starting off with a scripture. Out of 1 Thessalonians 4.16, so if you're at home and have your Bibles, I'd love for you to tune in with me and read along. So right here in, in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13, it says, But I do not want you to be ignorant brethren concerning those who have fallen asleep. Now listen, I've done a lot of funerals in my life, and you see a lot of people sitting in the casket. And I'm talking about believers in Jesus, because this is our hope. As people look into that casket, they think that person is a dead person. But Jesus said when he was alive and he was on this earth, Jesus gave us a promise. He said, for those that liveth and also believe in me, they shall never die. So listen, my friend, today that's a great message for you, that you can have this hope for those of you who have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you shall never die because of your faith and your acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You shall never die. So going back to the scripture, Jesus is talking about people who have fallen asleep, lest you have sorrow as those who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Now listen, this is the hope that we want you to have. As we go through these shows and crossing paths week after week after week, we share about these testimonies and how people have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is what gives us that hope of everlasting and eternal life. See, when the Bible talks about people that have no hope, these are the people that don't know Jesus. So my friend, if you don't know Jesus today, we're gonna to give you an opportunity at the end of this show to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I, I would just encourage you to do that. So let's get back to the scripture. It says here in verse 15, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So listen, there's an order of events here that are gonna take place in the future. There are people that have died that we say, the Bible says that these people have fallen asleep, but yet there's gonna be people on the earth who are yet alive. So there are these different groups of people that the Bible clearly teaches about. And I just encourage you to be in that group that knows Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You know, back there in the book of Job, the 19th chapter, Job said this, he said, oh, I wish that my words were inscribed in a book forever. And he said this, he said, I know that my redeemer liveth and in the latter day he will stand upon this earth. And even though the earthworms may destroy my body, yet in my flesh, I will see God. Job proclaimed that hundreds of years before the Messiah was even born. He recognized death, he recognized the Messiah, but more importantly, he, he understood and recognized this resurrection from the dead. And this is the hope we have as believers in the Messiah. So let me finish here with these last couple verses. It says, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ, those who have died in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So listen, my friend, today this message is a word of comfort for you. So I encourage you 
to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Trust in him. Get to know him. I know today you're hearing an awesome testimony of God's goodness and grace. And as I said at the end of the show, we're going to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus. So I thank you for this, this short message that you've allowed me to share with you. So let's get back to the show. Thanks, Ron, with something to think about. So Gary, you just found out that you have COVID-19, you tested positive, and yeah. they say it's bad. They told me it was bad. What do you mean it's bad if you don't even feel anything? They or? told me, well, that's one reason they told me I had it bad, because I never knew I had it. Yeah. Because I was doing my work at my workplace at McDonald's. Nobody there ever got it. But how I got it, I do not know. Yeah. But anyhow, they told me I had it bad, and they were taking me up to another room, they me to an, a way that nobody could come in contact with me. Uh, they put me in a room. I asked them to check my wife to make sure she didn't have it because she's my companion. She's with me most of the time. She never got it. God blessed her because God never, she never got it because she has emphysema and all that stuff. That'd be rough on her. But I was in this room. I had uh, just a door and a ventilator that went out to a wall and that's the last thing I remember. Hmm. I can remember them when I was on the machine, the, the ventilator. They would come in, and they were very nice nurses. I mean, I was Jameson Hospital. They treated me well. I remember the nurses coming in and, and saying, well, Mr. Palm, uh, we're going to do this. They, like, they, were going to, they explained to me that they were going to put a, a pill down a tube that was in my throat along with the ventilator. And they were telling me they were going to pour water in the tube to, to flush the pill down the rest of the way. But in, when they weren't in the room with me, now this is the part people are going to say, what did, why do you think, see this? It's the medication they had me on. They had me on one medication. My wife told me to take, take it off because it would cause me to have Alzheimer's in the meantime. And they said, well, it would take longer for him to go through the process. And she says, I don't care how long it takes him to go through the process, but take him off. So th these drugs I was on, you could, my, now imagine this. You're in a hospital bed, OK? And you're laying there. And I want your hospital bed starts going everywhere through the hospital. Hmm. Out in the fields, cornfields. That's what you're feeling like? Yeah. Huh. Your bed's moving all around. And then, you know, you come back to the, back into the hospital and this, and that. And then this one person, she was a, like an aide. And I said, how come my bed's moving? And she says, your bed's not moving. She took, I said, yes, it is. She said, no, your bed can't move. And she's sitting there shaking the bed and wouldn't move. And she said, and she got very rude, you know. And uh, I said, okay. She walks away and the bed starts moving again. Hmm. So one day I ended up in transfer to a, uh, a festival they were having in my bed. And uh, I was looking around and, and I was having a problem to do, do something. Well, there were some of my friends. I thought maybe they would come over and help me get situated. Hmm. They laughed at me, mocked me, you know, they made fun of me. Now, this is how the enemy were trying to confused my mind to accept his ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went on, and, you know, this and that and laughed, and then my bed would go someplace else. I mean, I was inside of a great big McDonald's place, and I got stuck between two coffee machines. Mm -hmm. This is always in your head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My bed was stuck between two coffee machines. Yeah. And it w couldn't go anywhere because something was behind it, and finally they moved it, my bed moved out and went down. <clears throat> and... Then it, I went to a, a, a place around where Jameson's opened up a, an area up for the homeless to come in and get warm and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen people in there, they, you know, this and that. And, and uh, again, this girl, I went back to over where this person was. I said, my bed's still moving. She says, no, it ain't. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she got very rude again. And, Shook the bed. As soon as she walked away, the bed started going. But you know, Gary, 
drugs can do that. Yeah. And there are other drugs can do that. Yeah. You know, I don't want to stop you on that, but then how long were you on the ventilator? Nine days. Nine days. No. Nine days. What was that like? I mean, that was me. Uh, like I said, my bed was moving around. When if my bed weren't moving, I it was staying still. I had people coming up out of the grave at me. Were you conscious or unconscious? At the I time? was on in a coma. You were in a coma. At the time. I was in a coma. So you're experiencing all this in a coma. No in a coma. Idea, yeah. Are you still on the critical list? As yes, far as the, I still right? am. Right? Yes. All right. Because they told my wife they didn't know if I was going to come off the machine okay. Hmm. And she told them, if I if they if they have to take me off the machine and put a, a, a uh, tranquilizer in, in me. To make me breathe for the rest of my life, she says, don't. Because that was my will. I didn't want to have any attached to any machines to drag around. You know, so you went through that death experience. Yeah. You're here today. Everything's, yeah. everything's right, right? Yeah. You're in good health again, right? I mean. I'm in, I'm in the best health I can be in because. Under the condition, right? Yeah, you, you have a lot of side effects. I know. So, so you people out there will wonder, you know, the ventilators did help. Uh, yeah, they kept me. Uh, they uh, kept me alive at that point of time. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. No. Because see, this this virus attacked my brain. Okay, it attacked the nerve system that tells you to breathe, and it attacked that. That's when I quit breathing, and that's when they lost me for a couple of minutes to get me on this machine, get me set up for this, to get on this and everything. I was not breathing. My heart was down and they got me back on and got me breathing in the meantime like I said the living will my wife on later on but she said leave them on the machine but you know what you're when you're on that machine you're in a coma now if you're visiting somebody in the hospital who's on a coma be very careful what you say because that person can hear everything mm. that's going on mm. you were aware of everything I, I was aware I mean they even played music to help me keep me calm yeah. There's times, Don, I wanted to give up. But when I wanted to give up, I kept saying, I'm a child of God. I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ. And that brought me up out of the depression part you were in. Okay. My, oh, my. You're hearing the story here. I mean, right? That's just unbelievable, right? Yeah. And we know that this is not the best situation. In any. In fact, I think we ought to put a plug in for Jameson Hospital if they've done... So they treated me, they tr and the nurses down there, they treated me well, even when they came in the room. Now, I could imagine what they were wearing to a point, because I could, you could tell by the voices, you know, that they were behind something. And they would come in and say, like they told me, they're going to put the pill into my, in, the, in this tube and water. They told me how they're going to turn me on, over on, in the bed to, to keep me from being flat on my back all the time. Uh, they never put me on a stomach like they've done some people. But they put me on one side, and then they said, come in later on, they're going to turn me this way, and they're going to clean me up. Uh, they, they're very nice. They explained everything to me, okay. what they were going to do and you, everything. You know, you know I, time's running out here. The reason I say that, I wanted to bring this in, that are you ready? Uh, you were ready. Yes, uh, I was I, ready. I, we don't speak negative on this program, believe me. I'm positive as positive could be. Yes. But you have to be ready. I don't care whether your age, your age, or yeah. my young age. I want to tell you something. Are you ready out there? This message is, he went through this disease, this virus. Call it what you want. I don't know. I pray to God today that you take a message that you have to be ready. You don't know where it come from. You know, it's like a heart attack. You know, people have had a, they've retired and they're in perfect health, and two days later they drop dead. Are you ready? That's the most important thing. Whoever you are watching this program, you know, and say, well, I got a lot of time and I'll stop this, I'll do that. No, I'm sorry, that isn't what the Bible says. John 16, 316 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son, just like he said he saw. He saw a vision, whatever he saw. But he had the Lord, he knows the Lord. But do you know the Lord? I emphasize that today, people. Time is running short. And I'm gonna have you, we have a telephone number on the screen and it's there. We have people standing by. We have people that go into church today that won't even pick the Bible up, like me. Don't even want to pick the Bible up. Have no desire to pick the Bible up. But someday you will. One guy told me, I don't believe the Bible. I said, someday you will. You have a chance today to get a free Bible.
Call that telephone number on the screen, 724-981-7777. There's people standing by who want to help you. This man's telling the truth. He knows, I know, we meet people on our television ministry here that have told stories that are true. Mm -hmm. I would not leave this message today if I didn't tell you. God loves you. He wants to be with you. He'll give you a chance. He won't give up on you. And there's nothing you have done that he will not forgive. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that nice to know? God loves you. We love you. And call that telephone number right now. God bless you. Hi, I'm in my backyard here and people have been asking me about Crossing Pass books and we found a couple of these in our inventory, Crossing Pass Treasure, uh, Volume 1. And it is various people in their lives that appeared on our television program and some of them are very interesting. They're all interesting, but I want to tell you some of them if you would like to get this book, okay? Uh, we have a Jewish lady that was converted, okay? We have a, 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 a pastor from the Nazarene Church who got baptized in the Holy Spirit and he's in here too. And we have... Uh, my wife is uh, Joyce here. Is a, a story of her life is in here, and my particular short story of life is my in, in here too. So, if you'd like to help us out with this ministry, we sure would appreciate it. We have Ben Kintro's life in there. There's so many good stories. These stories are all about their individual lives and telling them about their lives. So, for fifteen dollars, you could send us or anything additional on top that would help us to keep us on the air. God bless you and thank you. Hi, it's my pleasure and honor to announce to you that Crossing Pass Ministries and His Food Ministries have joined forces to fight hunger. Our goal is, is to bring in 30 families every single week, families of four, and we feed them every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. With your donation to Crossing Pass Ministries, you'll be able to help us help others by fulfilling the Great Commission. We're a family of five. As a single income family, we have been so blessed through His Food Ministry. With um, $20 a week, we can come Monday, Thursday, and Saturday and get more than a huge box full of food. With local vendors participating like Chick-fil-A, it's delicious food and it is definitely worth the money. My husband and I are grateful, very, very grateful for the ministry because grocery prices go up everywhere except here and we feed whoever shows up at our house. So there's no way we could do that effectively if it weren't for his food ministry. As a single um, income family with five of us, uh, it was very, very hard to go shopping and stay within budget. With his food ministry, all the basic stables to make a meal are provided. I have not gone grocery shopping for probably a couple of months. We cannot do this without you. We need your financial support to fight this battle. So please dial that number at the bottom of the screen or go to our website to support us fulfill the Great Commission. If you would like to support a local family by donating to His Food Ministry and Crossing Paths, go to crossingpaths.org and click on the Donate Now button.